from the Penn Libraries. Um, so I'm going to be talking today about um, um, a new tool that we, we purchased called the eBay Capture, which basically allows you to capture um, from a whiteboard um, writing with dry erase markers onto your computer. Um, and this is a tool we learned about actually through the through uh, Coursera, the folks over at the, the Coursera uh, here at Penn have one of these, and we were so impressed with it that we decided to, to get one. We've had requests for this type of technology for a while. People, um, especially, especially faculty, but certainly not just faculty, um, students also and staff, um, want to be able to basically kind of write on the computer and capture it in some way. And we've tried different things from a block and tablet to um, using iPads, and nothing really seemed to quite do the job quite right. No, nothing really duplicates that um, experience of actually writing on a chalkboard or whiteboard um, and being able to capture that. Um, so the eBeam capture that we have it comes in a few different parts to it. Um, the most important part is this sensor, it's also the most expensive part, um, is this sensor which actually tracks where the dry erase markers are. Um, this is magnetic, um, so you can just stick it to a whiteboard. Um, and you can move it around where you need to. I'll show you about that in a second. This kit also comes with some metal plates. So if you wanted to mount this permanently on a wall, for example, maybe next to um, something that, where there isn't a magnetic surface normally, you can kind of make your magnetic surface with these plates. Um, uh, you could use this in addition to on um, um, a whiteboard. You could potentially use, on a, use this on a flip chart. Uh, so if you have a paper chart, for example. Um, and that actually has a couple of advantages over the, um, the, the uh, dry erase. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, there are a couple of versions of this um, kit. One of them has this Bluetooth. It's, it's wireless. Um, there's also the version that we went with, which is the USB version. The main reason we went with the USB cable is just this very long USB cable, uh, so that it can reach from the sensor to your computer, um, is that it's easier to use. There's less that can go wrong. People don't have to figure out how to make their Bluetooth get recognized, etc. Uh, so we just figured that there's, um, it's going to be easier with the uh, with Bluetooth. So this then just plugs right into this sensor, and you just put it here on the board. The other end is just a regular USB cable, and you just plug it into the computer that's running the software. Um, this is the software we're running right now. It's it's free. It comes with the kit. Um, it's available for both Mac and PC. There are a couple subtle differences between the two, and I'll talk about those in a minute also. Um, so right now, this is telling me it says your receiver could not be detected. It looked for this sensor, it couldn't couldn't find it because I hadn't plugged the USB cable in the wall. So um, it's um, it's asking me if I want to search again for it. Now that I've actually plugged it in, I'm going to click search again, and it's found it now. Um, and the first thing we actually need to do is um, I'm going to come to Tools and Calibrate Capture Area. We need to tell even kind of where on this whiteboard we're going to draw on, basically. Um, and I have it on this rolling whiteboard right now, just because so I can actually bring it into the, the view of the camera, etc., so you can see it better. But you could use this, this wall whiteboard here. You can capture a much bigger surface than this small whiteboard. So the first question it asks me is, where did you put the sensor? So it can, you can put it in any of, any of the four locations there, top, bottom, left, or right. It's a, Right here on the left, so it's already selected. I'm just going to click next. So the next thing it asks me to do is to actually tap a couple dots on the board to just to define the, the upper and lower right hand corners. So the thing I'm going to use for that are these. And these are the other things that come come with this kit. Um, these sleeves are actually an empty one. Um, this is just an empty sleeve. It has a battery in it. Um, so that this actually makes a little noise, a little buzzing sound. It's very hard to hear. Um, the older you get, the harder it is to hear, apparently. Um, but um, this actually kind of tracks that, um, that buzzing sound so it knows where you're, you're drawing. Um, these are empty when you get them. There's nothing in here. But you can just put a regular dry erase marker in. Just drop it in and close it. Uh, this takes these. Just a couple button batteries, right? Just like you use for 
various electronic devices. And then it has a cap you can keep on just um, because the regular cap won't fit on on the sleeve. Uh, can you guys hear this buzzing sound? I'll pass this around so you so when you press this in, it actually makes a slight buzzing sound. I'll just pass it on so you can just do that so you can hear what it's actually doing so that you can see what the game does. Um, so it asked me to actually on the whiteboard, it comes with four of these sleeves um, from through the markers to tap um, in the upper um, where the red dot is, so I'm going to tap it up here. And it, it heard that, it heard me do that, it's going to tap the dot about up here, I'm going to tap another dot down here. Okay, and so now it knows. It, it tells me how big my whiteboard capture is, I successfully defined this. At this point, I can click done. And here on the screen, it shows me the representation of my whiteboard. And Wherever I, I write with my, my whiteboard, it's going to capture on the on the on the on the software. Um, it's smart enough to know that if I write with a different color, it knows it's a different color. Um, and you can like I say there are four of these. Um, now I'm actually writing with a blue marker. You can see on here, so it doesn't actually know. It doesn't say, oh, look, you're writing with a blue marker. So you don't put blue up there. It's been told ahead of time kind of what color um, to use. And you can customize these, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so you can imagine, you know, professors are up here talking, you know, imagine the rectangle here, and this is four inches, and this is three inches. Right. So again, basically capturing this. What I can also do then after I'm I'm done with this is I can play this back. Hello. Um, you want to play this at a faster speed here? Um, I can tell it to loop over and over again. Um, if I when I'm when I'm done with, uh, hey Caitlin, could you run and get me the um, the eraser, which is I think on the chalk oh, chalk chalk tray on the left. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, so if I want to start a new, um, a new slide here at this point, so I can, you know, but I want to kind of keep this one so that I can refer back to it. Um, Uh, I can just say new, so it's a new slide, I can erase this old one. Come back to this, and you know, here's my new slide. You can save this file. Keep it, this is what <laughs> in addition to um, in addition to writing on the, the slide, I can actually erase with this eraser, and it knows that I've erased it. Also, this eraser also has one of those button battery uh, things in it, and it buzzes just like the markers do. So that when I erase, it knows where I'm erasing, and it just erases that um, from the slide. And then I can, yeah, continue. It does a pretty good job. Um, I can I can save this file now. I can just basically uh, save this um, in its own format to the desktop. Close the software. Reopen it later. Um, play it back again. Um, I can distribute this to students if they have the software. They can open it up and, and play it back. Um, the PC version of this software allows you to it's built into the software where you can actually record audio. So as I'm talking. It's recording what I'm saying as well as what I'm writing on the board. I could then export that as a movie, like a QuickTime file or AVI or WMV, um, and distribute that to students, put that on Blackboard or Canvas or, 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 um, or wherever it is you want to put on YouTube for that matter, um, so the students can then watch it at their leisure, hear my lecture. I could do this at home, you know what I mean? I could 
this whole lecture at home on the whiteboard talking. Um, the PC version has that functionality. The Mac version does not currently. I'm hoping that it will in the future. And in the meantime, what we do with a Mac is just use a piece of screen capture software like Snap Pro or ScreenFlow or Snagit, um, something like that. Um, and then we can you know, sit down with you and actually show you how to use it. Um, I don't think there's too much else I need to show you. The other feature that a um, couple of the things I'm not showing you today are one, it has the ability to have these live meetings where you can connect to this eBeam server and you can allow up to 25 other people to connect at the same time, and you can have these live meetings so that they are seeing you right on the chalkboard, whiteboard, um, live, and, and uh, hear you as you're talking. Um, the other thing that you can do is there's another uh, pen in here. This is a, this is not actually a marker. It doesn't write. It doesn't mark anything. Um, but if you use this software with a, um, a projector, um, so I can project this under the screen. Um, this also makes those buzzing noises. Um, I think it gives you some um, some points on the screen. You can tap like physically. I would walk up to the screen and tap on these specific points, and then I can actually use this like a mouse on my screen, and I can highlight things or tap on something and drag it around. If I had Photoshop open, I could actually be writing in Photoshop. It doesn't work as well as a situation where you know you've got you know, look, now you're looking at the back of me rather than what I'm actually doing. Um, it would work better with a short throw projector, maybe from the, the ceiling or ground, um, so that it's you don't have your shadow. Uh, messing up the image quite as much. But that functionality exists. If, if you're interested. I have tried it, 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 it does work. Um, I don't think I have too much else to say about it if you guys don't have more questions. OK. I have a question about what you just said. So yeah. if you had a document up there and you wanted to mark it, yeah. then, so what did you, so all the functionalities that you have here are there. Is that what you said? Basically, that, yes. Yeah. And what, I mean, it's whatever I could do with the mouse. I'm just using this as my mouse, essentially, by operating directly on the document here instead of. Oh. Yeah. So when you said move words around, you literally meant in the document. In the document itself. You could, right. You could like Tom Cruise or, you know, that in, in, the, in the movie. What, what's the movie? Um, Minority Report. Minority Report. There yeah. you go. Well, he's using his finger. Yeah. For do anything, but you know, this is this is your this, make, this turns you into Tom Cruise, basically. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Well, like I say, if you're interested, just let me know, and we'll um, we'll get you set up and, and figure out how, how, how we can get you uh, using it. Um, and I know the, the education commons also is going to be acquiring some of these, so they'll have some of them over there. Um, yeah, we also, expect to have three of them by the fall. Right, and I don't know if he's going to lend those or they're just going to be usable in the in the commons. I'm guessing. And um, lunch, so I need to talk. But they'll they'll be there also. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming, guys.